Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Still in Ecclesiastes. Only this time we're dealing with verse 7. Told you I was going to break this up. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. You know, some of you don't like rocking the boat. I get that. You know, most all of us do. So we go through life keeping our mouths shut at times when we should be opening them wide. There are things that need to be said. I don't know if you've ever seen the commercial. This was like a, um, a public service commercial. And the theme that went across every single one they did was, imagine the power of one voice. Imagine that. Imagine how you can stop a person from mistreating another by speaking up. Imagine how you can stop things that are unfair that happen in the government just by opening your mouth and speaking up. Imagine how many things could be changed in people's lives if a lot of you would step up to the plate and speak up. Make a stand against that stuff. Make a stand against human trafficking, against sexual slavery, against pedophilia. Make a stand against drug uh, uh, penetration, drug selling, and dope dealing. Make a stand against the cartels. Make a stand. Some of you have been so intimidated by people that you think are above you because they have instilled a fear in you and threatened and threatened and threatened you as if they have control over you. And they uh, perpetuate that control by constantly threatening from one threat to the next. They threaten your finances, your security, your job, your family, their lives. They threaten. Do you know, you almost have to be willing to die for what you believe in? That's what I respect about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He knew he was going to die, but it didn't stop him. He kept speaking up. He didn't keep silent when it was a time to speak up. Do you hear what I'm saying? So, like Jesus did, many of you need to rock the boat. Many of you need to offend and step on toes to make things right. But too many of you and too many of us, me included, tend to be too afraid to jump out of certain boundaries because what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, what if it does? Sometimes the people that die and I hate to say that, but sometimes because somebody has died, change comes. And while they're alive, they're seen as a nuisance or a troublemaker. But once they're unjustly killed, it opens up more minds, more eyes, more hearts. I know it sounds strange, but yeah, there is a time to speak. Some of you parents who have kids, this is another one. Some of you parents who have kids, you don't want to speak up because you don't want to deal with their attitude. You don't want to deal with them being angry with you. You're not supposed to be their buddy. You're supposed to be their parent. You don't want to lay a hand on them because they might report you. Let me tell you how one woman handled that one time. For those of you who are intimidated by your children, and as a result, you keep silent when you need to speak up. Okay, that time to speak. Yeah, and usurp your authority, your God-given authority. This person told me a story. <laughs> Their child decided to threaten them. They reared up their little ugly behind and started smelling themselves and thought they could put the fear of God in their parent. And you know what the mother did? 
you know, because the child threatened and said, I'll call authorities, I'll do this. She went in the kid's bedroom, snatched every bit of clothing off the hangers, snatched the clothes from out of the drawer, told the girl to get a suitcase because she was leaving that day. And the girl is like getting all freaked out. Like, what are you doing? You're going crazy. She said, oh, no, I'm not going crazy. I'm going to let you have it your way. Call the authorities. Call the authorities. I'm packing because I'm going to make sure you're ready when they get here because you will leave here and they will take you and put you in the system in foster care. And then you think you got mistreated here, baby. Ho, ho, ho. You're going to have to bow when you get in those foster care homes. And don't call me because this is your choice. Now, you either do what I say in my house, you comply even if I have to get on your behind, or you go. You make the call. The phone's right there. And that woman started throwing them clothes. She didn't fold them. She jammed them in the suitcase. And the kids started crying. I don't want to go. Well, then shut up. Next time you threaten, you're out of here. No more threats. Because the child knew that Mama Sita meant what she was saying. This one was not the kind of parent that said, I'm going to, and then don't follow through. That parent, they followed through. She knew it, and she didn't want to take the chance of doing it again. No more threats. No more trials of intimidation. That woman said, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. I pay the cost, I bees the boss. Now, you want to get out there and be the boss of your life? You're going to have to pay the cost, but you're going to have to pay it in foster care. Not with me. And then made the girl put all her clothes back up. I, I'm, You know, we have to know when it's time. There's a time to speak and there's a time to be silent. All right. Uh, number three. This is example number three. Then we're done with this one. Some of you ladies, ooh, you like to get in arguments, ooh, with your husband, uh-oh, and you don't know when it's time to stop. Now, I used to argue with my first husband. My second husband, we didn't have that kind of issue we would discuss, and they could be heated up discussions, but we didn't hoop and holler at each other and call each other names or none of that. But the first one, he hollered, and I would holler with him. But the Lord warned me. I saw something happen in his eyes. He had brown eyes like I do. But when he got angry, that dangerous anger, his eyes would turn cold black. And I'd cease and desist immediately, because I knew if he put a hand on me, he'd be in jail. It never went to that. He did break a window or two, but it never got to the point where he manhandled me. So, and I did threaten him, and I, he knew I meant it. You put a hand on me, buddy, you will go to jail. I don't care if it's a little scratch, you will go to jail. Because I will press charges. I don't love anybody enough to give them the right to beat up on me. And he would say, oh, well, what do you mean, uh just want to let you know. And some of you women, you don't know when to stop. Sometimes that man's eyes are changing color. Sometimes the horns are coming out. The smoke is coming out the ears. You know the, the signs. You know the, the physical uh, uh, signals that you get, the body language, that you're getting ready to cross over a line you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to get into because it's going to be your behind, not theirs. And you won't shut up. And the man says, shut up, son. Stop it now. Let's stop this now. And they might leave. They might walk out the house because they're gentlemen enough, gentlemanly enough to leave rather than stay and deal with a stupid argument. You know, when you're in a place of a fool, you get away from it or else you're going to act a fool like they do. 
So some men have enough sense and self-control to walk away. Maybe get a good run out, work that steam off. And here you come. But where you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you leave this house. I'm not done with you. You block the door. And... <sighs> Woman, where is your brain? You don't dare a man to hit you. You don't buck him like you're another man. You don't castrate his dignity. Zip the lip. That's the time for silence. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. Where's your soft answers? Where are they? Okay. And you men, you get in these clubs, you get with your buddies. Somebody says something or does a little something that's a little offensive. And instead of you shining it on and zipping your lip, you have to confront Bozo. Because you want to be a Bozo like the Bozo you're confronting. Instead of you walking away. But no, you can't let the guys think that you're a little sissy. So you have to show how big and bad you are. Do you know that's how many lives have been lost? Because somebody would not back down. They wouldn't shut up. They wouldn't walk away. Shut up, back down, walk away. Your children do not need to go to your funeral. And mother has spoken.